boy, you know, when you've spent your life screaming at Fox News in bars and hotels, and your house, and, uh, and then the emails finally come out that say, oh, yeah, everything you thought about them is worse than you thought. Uh, we're going to be talking about Dominion Voting System versus Fox News, the defamation trial that shows you uh, in the words of the great, late, uh, late, great Dennis Green, they are what we thought they are, uh, which is the worst. Uh, we're also going to talk to Jay Jordan and Robbie Slowick, our writers. What is up, kids? <laughs> Nothing much. Kind of dealing with the fallout of what you just described and looking at Twitter after that. Looking at Twitter after the the, the the Fox case. Yes, and seeing if they're going to talk about it at all. I combed through Fox News and Tucker Carlson's tweets, and I do want to say up top, I didn't see a single happy Black History Month tweet. Are you serious, Jay? <laughs> Not a one. Let me tell you something. It's an oversight, and here's why. Because he <laughs> believes every month is Black History Month, and he believes that why separate it out when that's how he lives his career? Yeah. Behind, behind the scenes, all the producers are talking about Black History Month. You know what? Happy Black History <laughs> Year. You know, you're going you're gonna to get the emails he's sending to Hannity. Why the fuck are you not talking about Black History, Hannity? We're going to lose our audience. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to shift over to BET. This is serious. <laughs> Look at our stock price. This is oh terrible. My God. <laughs> It is funny to see what he has promoted in the sense there was like he had like seven days ago where he was talking about the balloon and now it's just all his upcoming Fox Nation special on the death of comedy. Yes. And two days ago, mm -hmm. right back to gender, yes. right back to gender. Well, they're going to go right back to what they do, which is send the emails about we're going to use gender as a wedge issue. I mean, what it reveals is the thing that we have been screaming about for two decades which is this is a purposeful strategy to divide the country and gain political power through fear and lies and whatever the fuck else it would take. Uh, we've known about this. Listen, man, I sat in Roger Ailes' office. Well, John, I want to know how short was your skirt? Oh, it was, it was short, baby. Okay. And he said, I, I just, uh, just turn around there. Oh, oh, you, oh, oh, you are circumcised. All right. <laughs> And this is what the argument was for a year, which is you are a cynical bastard who is doing everything he can to destroy any legitimate criticism that might be leveled against Republicans or conservatives, not in an effort to win a debate, but to, de to destroy any obstacles that are in your way to consolidate power. And that is it. Full stop. It's just wild to watch. Yeah. Because terrible, terrible journalism, amazing Netflix series. You know what I mean? That's what this feels like. You go, no, it's, this has it's narratives. It's narratives. Yes. Yeah. This is truly Brilliant. a soap opera. And the level of projection around them every single day around all of this type of stuff. The fact that they dedicate hours of airtime to, you know, George Soros is a foreign billionaire trying to influence our politics. And then their <laughs> inbox is flooded with emails from a, a foreign billionaire being like, you need to do a better job influencing our politics. Yes. <laughs> well, that's the key. He's not uh, their problem with Soros is how ineffective he is. But by the way, it's not just media. This is part of a multi-pronged strategy. If you notice what happened on the right is any of the institutions in America, and by the way, this is not to say that there isn't unbelievably legitimate criticisms of colleges, media, newspapers. There is absolutely uh, huge swaths where those institutions fall down, fail, need to be improved. But their strategy was, we will devalue them, we will deauthorize them, and then we will build parallel structures, parallel college institutions, parallel think tanks, parallel news organizations, and rather than use them to properly promote a conservative versus liberal debate, we will skew reality and create, and it's the last of us, let's create an army of zombies and, and the cordyceps is the fear and disinformation and misinformation. I mean, it's, 
it's fucking amazing. It's just so deeply effective as well. I mean, they've really like, everyone is fighting for a very small sliver of the population where they get to create whatever reality they want with that sliver of the population. Well, what you hope is, and this is my only hope, is that finally other institutions that are meant to uh, earn authority by being correct or being smart will finally go, oh, fuck off. And we'll no longer say, oh, we're not getting the rights viewpoint enough on our network anymore. When they realize that that's not the rights viewpoint, that's the strategic viewpoint that they employ to gain power. It has nothing to do with right or wrong. It has nothing to do with conservative versus liberal. It has everything to do with consolidating power by any means necessary. And they have so worked the refs in the media atmosphere that they're scared shitless. People at, at you know, the, the networks and the other cable networks are scared shitless. Listen to the nonsense they spew. We want to get back to objective news reporting and call it balls and strikes and all that. Shut the fuck up and tell us what's going on for real and be uh, confident about it and don't back off because you're getting calls from Rupert Murdoch or that there is a giant audience of Fox News zombies that are calling you out for not putting lies on the air, have some fucking balls. That's the biggest thing that changed over the past seven, eight years is you saw CNN and, and ABC and NBC have to be like, well, I guess we have to talk about this. And mm -hmm. everyone was like, you don't have to. And they're like, no, we have to give a couple of hours. We have to let Rick Santorum be like, this is why gay people are icky. Like it was, there was just so many moments where I'd be like watching. I'd be like, y'all don't have to do right. this. You want to. Well, and right. they've so effectively crafted that narrative that every people just say the liberal New York Times in their head. Mm -hmm. And then you flip <laughs> through the New York Times. It's like, do we need four more wars in the Middle East? Are trans right. people human beings? And you're right, like, there's right. nothing liberal about this paper. That is the most fun I've been having. Is that like, what, five years ago, Donald Trump would have been like, the New York Times is a shit rag. And now today, all of my friends with Septon Pearsons are like, we agree. <laughs> <laughs> we agree. Yeah. Thank you, Don, for standing up for them. <laughs> no question. The weird thing is, on the right, they have the confidence of their convictions. What they believe is the worldview, and in some ways, it's why they've aligned themselves with Russia and Putin, which is Western civilization is under attack, and, uh, and America is weakening itself by being diverse and not being Christian enough. And so they've devised this strategy that they employ in all other areas, and it is a strategy, and it is purposeful, and it is uh, absolutely uh, in no way a truthful, it's just creating these sort of Potemkin institutions that exist not to create information that helps their cause, but to create strategies that rile up their audiences. They're looking for followers. It's so funny because two days ago, Tucker Carlson was like, Joe Biden hates straight white men. And I was like, you mean that old straight white man hates old, old hates old straight white people? I don't think that's the case. We're like, nah, because you know who's pulling the strings. They said diversity. They had a picture of Susan Rice up there. It's just so weird to see them go. So we have an argument. How do we find the science and the numbers to justify this cultural argument. They don't need to. And all they'll do is say that, you know, liberal media is facing a credibility crisis. I, I honestly, my biggest hope here is that they can no longer look you in the eye when they're saying they're bullshit. I still think they will because oh, one, of the, yeah. one of their greatest strengths is lack of shame. And that lack of shame allows them to continue this charade. I mean, it's, it's imagine it's like this. You're in the Wizard of Oz. You've gone through the, all the trials. Uh, the monkeys have flown through. You finally gotten to the wizard and they look behind the curtain and they find the wizard. The wizard, you finally realize this whole thing is being orchestrated and you bust him on it. And then he turns and goes, uh, no, 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 that's not, that wasn't me. That's not, that's <laughs> uh -huh. what they'll do. There, there will be no self-awareness. There will be no, you got me. There will be a doubling down that, oh no, 
uh, this is out of context and we're not lying and there's not anything. You pull back the curtain and the wizard just goes like, yeah, who was saying all that? That's, that's you. Here's your problem. You don't have a heart and you don't have a brain and you don't have courage. And John, we, Whoa, we, okay. we have a collection of these busted moments already. You know, when they said in court that no reasonable person would believe that Tucker Carlson is stating facts as yeah. a defense, which would be a good defense if there was a law in this country that you had to be a reasonable person to vote. But that's not the rules. You How know? can the legal argument be the same as your worst friend from college? Well, okay, you'd have to be stupid to actually think that. What if they just go into court and they go like, uh, Your Honor, I'm sorry, my news organization was really drunk. Uh, <laughs> he didn't, yeah. my, my news organization didn't mean anything by that. And listen, hey, 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 let's just all go peacefully here. I'm telling you, man, it'll never happen again. I got him. Yeah. I'm going to drive him home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't have to worry about this news organization ever again. Your Honor, I can't, uh, for the fans, I can't break kayfabe. You know, I've got <laughs> to stay is. in character all by the time. By the way, that is, you couldn't be dead on. For those who are fans of wrestling, that is exactly what it is. It is uh, a nudge, wink, wink, little world that they've created where they all had to hold on to it. You know, when you talk about defamation, so it's honestly, it's just going to be money. The truth is, when you're an organization that has a loyal audience, you really can't be beat. Now, I could see somehow legally them saying you can no longer have the word news in your title. Or you have to make it very little. Yes. I, uh, <laughs> How little would the logo have to be, Jay? Tiny, <laughs> the tiniest script. Uh, I'll tell you a little roma short romantic story. When I first moved to New York <laughs> yes, City. Bobby, please, please. With uh, uh, Casey Ballstrom, who is my wife now. When she moved here, we she were just friends. She is your wife. She is my wife. But we were just friends when we moved here. And then we slept together the first night. That's an aside. We don't need that detail. <laughs> Was that, but, was that based on the size of the apartment you moved Yeah, yeah. John, it really was. It oh, truly God. was. To celebrate our moving, we went and got a bottle of wine from a bodega. So uh, we open up this bottle of wine, and it is like a rancid, sweet uh, uh, grape juice. It's disgusting. Man you can't drink it. it's right? They call it Manischewitz, right? Basically. So I look at this bottle, and I learned a New York City lesson. You can only buy wine at liquor stores in New York. Bodegas can't sell wine. But what they do is they sell a fake product they can fool you with once called wine product. It looks like wine. The bottle looks like wine. They make oh. you think it's wine. And Fox News is news product. It oh. looks like news. You think it's news, mm -hmm. but it's right. not. It would be the same if in that bottle of wine was heroin. And that <laughs> heroin addicted you and all you wanted was more. <laughs> yes. To the point where if you saw a different news channel on in an airport, it would make you mad. It would make you mad that this other network would be allowed to broadcast because they live in the upside down, an upside down that was created to flatter their fears and prejudices. And uh, this wine product that you speak of is now the largest semi-alcoholic brand of wine in the country and it's killing yeah. all of our grandparents. <laughs> I like the wine analogy because if you drink enough Fox News, you will say, oh, so I can't say it, but they can say it in songs. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. I'm just repeating the lyrics. <laughs> this is, it's for me, it's, I, I feel like if Buzz Aldrin, if you just looked at his emails and it said like, yeah, we faked it. If you were one of those guys, <laughs> like 50 years, you've been, you've been going like, I'm telling you, they weren't there. It's, it's a green screen. You've got yeah. to believe me. And then finally, you got to look at the emails and you're like, we weren't there. Uh -huh. You're right. I think the other thing that I noticed when I was like looking at all this stuff is that when Robbie described it as wrestling, it is such character work. It's such a strong like acting gig yeah. for them that the minute they pull back the curtain at all, it's like, well, she's fucking crazy. I'm not going to say that. Oh my God, how am I going to get away with this? Oh, I can't. Right. It's so funny and I guess illuminating to see the amount of vitriol that they have for each other behind the scenes because everyone's trying to be the most famous person. Everyone wants to have the highest rated hour. Everyone wants to be closer to the kingmaker. It's so poisonous. I feel like we're in the steroid era of news, you know, where it's like, yeah, there's an asterisk, but it's fun to watch. You're saying they might not get into the Hall of Fame. I'm saying they might not get into the Hall of Fame, yeah. <laughs> it is, it's interesting. You know, when they discovered the steroid era, it, it became less obvious that there was cheating in baseball. Like you didn't see any of the people 
there were no more baseball players that looked like Simpsons drawings of baseball players, <laughs> like <laughs> giant heads yes. and the little body, like that change. But I don't think they'll back down an iota. I don't think because there's no drug test for lying. Mm -hmm. There's no, you know, here's the change that's going to be made at Fox News. Stop emailing and texting people. It's Ooh. just going to run like the mafia now. Right. When you have something to say, you're going to go outside to the corner where the phone booth used to be and you're going to whisper it. But they're not going to they're not going to leave a paper trail. They're not going to leave the evidence that they left, that this is collusion and this is a strategy and this is cynical. That will be the only change because they will not change their goal or what they're trying to do. I do think Brian Kilmeade is going to be the one who's like, I'm so happy I didn't put this in paper in an email. <laughs> Kilmeade and Ducey are going to take that place yeah. down. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, Ducey is the one who comes out smelling like a rose in all of this. They will double down. And Tucker is, you know, his whole persona now is this vitriolic character. I, I mean, I don't even know if it's a character. I mean, maybe he is just an honestly terrible person. It, it may be. They're like, he's so aggrieved and everything has gone right for him. All, he grew up rich. But it doesn't matter that, that he grew up rich. It's what he chooses to do with his, with his power. Listen, yes. here's what he is. He's Hunter Biden without a crack habit. It's the same <laughs> shit. That's why he called him to say, help my son get into Georgetown and yep. do all that. I got a Tucker Carlson. I swear to fucking, if, if a date rape drug had a face, <laughs> It would be his. Yes. Like, he, is. He, he, is, he is that guy. He is the angriest looking boat shoe I've ever seen. He is more charcuterie board than man. Yeah. All he is is a man looking for justifications for the evil that is in his heart. Mm -hmm. And his whole life is dedicated to that. I do think we are being a bit negative, though, because once again, <laughs> this is my favorite genre of high prestige TV. This is succession. Uh -huh. yes. This is White Lotus. This is messy white people behind the scenes, billions of, billions of dollars at stake. This is gripping television. Horrible news. Great TV. Can I say that my favorite revelation from all this is that a... Uh, Tucker uh, Ingram Hannity group text thread exists. That that I, that just probably looks like a collection of the angriest Yelp reviews you've ever seen Robbie, going back and forth. I'm going to go one step further and say, I got to see the media tab uh -huh. on that group chat. Oh, I know what it is. I <laughs> no, know what it is. Don't know what it it's is. Laura Ingram sharing some of the memorabilia she collects. You know? <laughs> <laughs> this is a Luga. <laughs> it's a gun that I found. It's a full Obergruppenfuhrer uniform intact. <laughs> and them showing vacation photos in Argentina. <laughs> the, the whole thing is, is disappointing. It'd be like finding out that the friends weren't really <laughs> friends. <gasps>